Hello everyone, this video is about how to apply user-based access control to your DynamoDB table. You're going to learn about how to restrict access to both certain rows and certain columns of your table. This is a two-part series. In this video, I'll explain the concepts and in part two, I'll walk you through how to set it all up. So let's just jump right into it and I first want to explain some of these concepts through a practical example. So let's say that we have an AWS account here and we have an Amazon DynamoDB table uh, and that table happens to be our customer orders table. Now let's assume someone comes along, maybe some particular customer or some particular developer and they tell you, can I have access to your DynamoDB table please? and they assure you that they'll be very, very careful with it. Now, in a lot of applications, you don't want to give free reign access to your DynamoDB table. You want to give access to the entire contents because maybe it contains some sensitive data or attributes that this particular user or developer should not be able to see. Maybe some uh, customer information such as address uh, or social security number, any kind of personally identifying information that should be heavily guarded. So how do you get around this, right? Like how do you only provide certain access, uh, which is what I'm trying to visualize here, to this particular user. And this is the main idea of fine grain access controls. We want to restrict access to only a particular subset of rows that exist in this table and only a subset of the existing attributes that also exist. Uh, so how do we go about doing this? How do we restrict access to just these subsets of data? Uh, well, it turns out that we can craft some AWS identity and access management policies. And these policies take advantage of some very specific features from IAM that allow you to do this. Now, in this particular example, we talked about how to restrict access to a customer, but there are some other applications of using this kind of methodology to restrict access to other developers that may want to build an application that has certain and access to these columns and these rows. And in, to do that, you would just create a IAM role and then create a cross account uh, IAM trust relationship with the other account. Uh, but this is a whole other thing, not something that you really need to know about, but I just wanted to emphasize here that if you have another application that exists in another AWS account, you can do the same thing that we're talking about here. So grant access to only a subset of your data. All right, so that is a little bit of background information of what we're gonna be talking about. Uh, so let's move on to how we actually set this up and what are the main concepts. Uh, so the first one is something called IAM conditions. And I will be completely honest with you here, I had no idea that IAM conditions even existed. And it turns out that IAM conditions are an optional attribute of your IAM policy. So you don't actually have to use them, but they're there to provide some very interesting functionality. So what are IAM conditions? Well, IAM conditions are a component of your IAM policy that allows you to add conditions or constraints for when a policy is in effect. So typically when we write a policy, like it consists of attributes, it usually consists of a resource, which is the ARN of our attribute. Uh, and then we can also add conditions that provide an even deeper level of constraints over when this policy is in effect. Now a condition consists of three core parts or three main parts. Uh, and this is what one looks like. So we have the condition key here over on the left hand side. And then we also have the condition operator. The condition operator are things like string equals or string contains or string like. So basically uh, matching operators that you can use to match certain keys against certain values. And then we have a condition key. Condition keys are, are usually specified by AWS and they're usually pretty unique to services. Uh, we'll see an example of this in a minute. And then we also have the value that we're interested in applying the filter to. Uh, so let's see an example of this in action of a real uh, condition applied to a policy. So this is one where we're saying the condition uh, is string equals. So that's the condition operator here. And then the condition key is something called AWS username. Now this isn't one that applies to a particular service. This is kind of a global condition key that's accessible uh, for all AWS accounts. And it's saying that the AWS username must be equal to John Doe. So effectively, what this condition is saying, if I were to attach it onto a policy, is that the AWS username must be equal, must be equal to John Doe. You can also do like other interesting things like must contain John or stuff like that. And therefore, John Doe would also match to this policy. Now, there's also another good thing to know about here, which is that condition keys can be unique to AWS services. So a whole bunch of different AWS services have different condition keys that they 
I guess you can say respect and allow you to achieve some very, very interesting functionality. And it turns out this is what we're going to be using in the next section when we talk about restricting access. But to give you an example of something that isn't Dynamo, uh, this is another condition that I pulled up here. And this is saying string like, and we're saying S3 prefix, and then it must contain Jane Doe. And then everything after that is a wildcard. So basically giving access to buckets where you have Jane Doe inside of it and anything after the forward slash you will have access to. Um, so you have to do some individual reading on what each of these different IAM condition keys mean. They're specific to each service. So you kind of need to understand uh, the syntax of each one and what to provide in terms of the input. And by the way, there's a whole bunch of reading that you can do on IAM conditions. This runs very, very deep, but I've just kind of given you the high level summaries or what you need to know for this type of tutorial. So let's move on now to the next section, which is uh, using leading keys. And these are one of the condition operators that we were just talking about. Um, you know, we were just talking about S3 prefix, but leading keys is one that's useful for us for this DynamoDB access control exercise. All right, so what do leading keys mean? Well, leading keys allow you to restrict record level access to your DynamoDB table. And sometimes this is called horizontal access control. To give you a more visual example, if we have a table that looks like this, leading keys would allow you to access or restrict access to just a certain subset of rows that exist for your table. Now, I know some of you are NoSQL experts. You're probably going to say, oh, you know, NoSQL or DynamoDB tables don't have rows. They don't have columns. They're documents. Um, for all intents and purposes, I completely agree with you. But just for a visualization purpose, it helps to use rows and columns to, to visualize what we are actually restricting our access to. So let's see a IAM policy that allows us to do this. Uh, so this is a IAM policy, and I just kind of highlighted some areas of interest here. Uh, so first of all, if we take a look at the action section, we are using DynamoDB batch get item, get item, and query. Uh, these are three read operations. So this would be a permission set or a policy where we're only giving access to these three read permissions on our table. And then down below, we have the condition section. And then we're taking advantage of those three concepts that we discussed before. So the first section here for all value string equals, this is the condition operator. And there's a whole bunch of documentation that you can take a look at to understand this a little bit more. But what you can see here is that it supports like kind of a for loop type of syntax. So you can say for all values, not just one particular value, apply this certain condition to. And then we can see the condition key is DynamoDB leading keys. Again, this is something that's specific to DynamoDB. And then we're saying the value is customer one. So effectively what we're saying here is with this policy, we are restricting access to this table where the partition key is customer one. And that's something that you really need to understand about leading keys. This applies to the partition key. So it does not apply to any other attribute or any other uh, column that you may have in your table. So the main point here is that DynamoDB leading keys restricts access to where the partition key matches the corresponding value. Okay, so that's how you restrict access to certain rows. Now what about columns? And it turns out in order to restrict access to columns, you need to use something called DynamoDB attributes. And like I just briefly touched on, attributes allow you to control access to columns. And like we saw in the previous example, this would be uh, kind of a vertical scope or a vertical access control where you only want to specify access to certain columns for your table. Uh, like you would imagine, it is sometimes called vertical access control. So what does an IAM policy that wants to do vertical access control look like? Well, it looks like something a little bit like this. So nothing really changed much in terms of the actions. We still have batch get item, get item and queries, but something did certainly change in the condition section. So let's take a look at this in a little bit more detail. So we still have that for all value string equals, and this time we are using the DynamoDB attributes condition key. And this takes an array, and we are saying we want to give access to both the customer ID and the basic attribute. Now, a little bit of a pro tip here, you always need to put in the partition key from what I can tell. Uh, if you don't put in the partition key, which in this case would be the customer ID, the first column there, then you may get some sort of error. Uh, that's just a pro tip that I discovered during testing. 
And then also below it, it turns out that you need um, this additional part of the condition, which is string equals if not exists, which is the condition operator. Then we're using the condition key of Dynamo to be select. And then we're saying specific attributes. So what adding this bottom section is uh, saying to us here is saying, I want to restrict access to specific attributes or specific columns of our DynamoDB table. And then which columns do we want to restrict access to? Well, it's these columns or these attributes, customer ID and basic attributes. So these are the ones that we are giving away access to. So this is a whitelist methodology. We're giving away, we're specifying which columns that we want to provide access to. Now, uh, in terms of the key takeaway, DynamoDB attributes restricts access to specific columns and that extra DynamoDB select um, kind of statement at the bottom there tells Dynamo that these are the attributes that I want to use uh, to restrict access to. All right, so that's how you restrict access to certain columns. Now let's take a look at a complete example combining both of these concepts together. Um, so let's say that we have a DynamoDB table here that is something called customer orders table. And this is kind of uh, similar to some of the policies that I was constructing, but we have customer ID, customer ID one, two, three, we have basic attributes, and then we have a restricted attribute. And maybe this contains something like uh, highly sensitive data, like address information or other personally identified information that you want to guard access to. So I want to craft an IAM policy that's gonna give uh, access to just customer one's data. So just customer one's row. So not customer two and not customer three. And then I also wanna give away access to basic attribute, but not restricted attribute. So here's a little visualization that'll help you uh, understand what I'm trying to do here. All right, so how do we, we craft a policy that does this? Well, we just combine both of these concepts together. Uh, so again, we are using the read policies or the read actions to get read-only access to our table. And then we're just combining those two concepts. So we're saying for all values, string equals, we want uh, this to apply to Dynamo to be attributes, which attributes, customer ID and basic attribute. Um, and then if we just skip this section for a bit, we're, we're completing the uh, attribute level access control. So we're saying string equals not exists, Dynamo to be select, specific attributes. This makes it so that we're only getting access to customer ID and basic attribute. And then we're also combining this with that concept of Dynamo to be leading keys, which allow us to restrict access at the row level. And the value that we want to specify here is customer one. And this happens to be this row. So with this particular policy, we would restrict access to this particular customer's row, and we would only be exposing both customer ID and basic attribute to the user that is using this policy. Now you may ask yourself in this type of policy, like, you know, we're hard coding customer one in here. What if we want to, you know, make this a little bit more generic? We want to write a policy once and maybe reuse the contents of this for customer one, customer two, customer three, customer N. Well, it turns out that there's an easy way to do that using some dynamic properties that you can inject into your IAM policy. So let me show you now an interesting example of using dynamic uh, attributes as part of your policy to inject some of this stuff at runtime to achieve some really cool functionality. Uh, so good to know. Now the good to know that I want to walk you through here is that we can combine IAM policies and dynamic values with Cognito user and identity pools. So if you've never used Cognito before, it allows for authentication and authorization, which is what the user and identity pools are for. So authentication being who are you and authorization being what do you have access to, right? These are two types of questions that are kind of relevant for building a policy that restricts access to particular users. So how does this work? Like how can we say only a, a particular user has access to a particular subset of rows and only craft that policy once? So let's take a look at this in action. Uh, so again, let's assume that we have customer one and we've set up our Amazon Cognito user and identity pool. And we ask this user to authenticate or type in their username and password with Amazon Cognito. They go ahead and do that. And uh, using identity pools and com combining that with identity and access management, you can create a IEM role. And you can craft that role so that it has some dynamic uh, values that can be injected at runtime. So what you can do, and this is the condition section of the role that you grant to this user or this group of users that are logging in, 
you can use this very interesting notation here, which is kind of like a substitution uh, notation. So we're saying um, dollar sign open paren cognito dash identity dot Amazon AWS dot com. And then we're substituting. That's what the colon sub corresponds to. So basically we're taking whatever value is provided here and just substituting it into this policy. So if the value that this returns is customer one, then customer one would be injected at runtime here. So the policy would be applicable to just customer one. Now, if you have customer two, customer three, customer four, all logging in, well, this policy would dynamically change to reflect each particular customer's value. So what this allows you to do, well, after the authorization grant is allowed, it allows you to do what we were trying to do before. So you can now have this policy uh, granted to this particular user that has very limited access to only a subset of records that exist in our DynamoDB table. You can also use other social sign-on providers. So if you use like uh, login with Google or login with Facebook, uh, that's also possible as well. If you wanna use a particular attribute, like, I don't know, email or phone number or something as the leading key. But there's some documentation that shows you how to, uh, or what value to put in to get that type of functionality. But this is some super cool types of access control that you can do that is pretty dynamic and makes it so that you only have to write the policy policy once and you can apply it to a whole bunch of different users. Uh, so that's some of the cool things that you can do with this. Now I want to tell you about two gotchas or two things that I figured out that I don't wish on anybody. The first one is that access controls do not work or does not work with the scan operation. And just as a reminder, the scan operation is basically like a select star from table in SQL. So get me everything or give me everything from the table. I could not find a way to get the conditions to work with this. I'm not sure if this is because it's not supported or for some other reason. Um, I couldn't find any documents documentation as well for making this work with scans. But from what I can tell, this is not supported. If you find a way, let me know down in the comment section below. The second one, which is kind of like a pro tip, but um, you should not or don't use deny based policies, which is um, kind of synonymous with saying allow access to all attributes except these particular attributes. So let's give you an actual example to map out what that means. So this is the column based policy that we were talking about before. So in this example, we're saying we only want to give access to customer ID and basic attribute, right? Only two. So this is effectively a whitelist. We are specifying which columns we want to give access to. Now it turns out IAM is very, very flexible. And what you can possibly do is you can create a policy that says, give me access to everything except these values, right? So you can do a blacklist, so to speak. So you say, give me everything except these values. And this is not a good strategy because you can very easily just start adding columns to your DynamoDB table. And if you use a blacklist or a deny based policy, then all of a sudden, all these users that may not rightfully have access to this data will start getting access to these columns without you knowing about it. So the guidance from AWS is to always use an allow based policy or a whitelist policy, similar to what I have in front of you here. So for a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to set this up, make sure you watch the video on the right. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe.